Okay, now we're on to case uh, six. So, I can take this. Okay. Uh, so, we see kind of ulcerated skin here uh, with rust. Good. Uh, and a lot of inflammatory cells below it. But then uh, we see a lot of like kind of very hyper uh, hypercellular population in the dermis that consists of very geomorphic spindle shaped cells. Very fibrotic looking. Okay, good. And uh, as I said, a lot of geomorphism. And uh, I saw mitosis also. Yeah. Then not not real crisp on this scan, yeah. but yes, there are multiple mitoses, including like tripolar, atypical ones. Yeah. I know it's a little blurry here, but yeah, sheet of pleomorphic ugly spindle cells, lots of mitoses. And this all of this lesion is like kind of slammed up against the epidermis. Slammed up against the epidermis. No grens, right? Very good. Yeah. So we we can apply the slab differential here. Okay. And this diagnosis usually is kind of diagnosis of exclusion. But I have seen uh, with Dr. Rapini that he uses CD10 also. This, for me, this would be uh, a typical cytosan tumor. Okay. But uh, so he uses CD10 on this very often. Okay. Us at least. Uh, but we, we uh, in order to uh, exclude all the other things, we have to use S100 to rule out melanoma, spindle cell melanoma. Good. For a spindle cell, squamous cell carcinoma, we, we should do keratin. Uh, it can be a leiomyosarcoma, so we have to do desmin. Okay. So, and, and then, just for confirmation, we can do CD10. Or... Very good. Yes, so the SLAM differential, very nicely explained, Rahil, that, oh, look at how atypical that mitosis is. Whoa, it's like a, a lambda or something. I don't know what it is. Um, yeah, so uh, this is a, the typical situation here is this is an erythematous, ulcerated, sometimes crusted, not always, but sometimes uh, erythematous papule or nodule on the, usually on the head and neck of an elderly sun damaged person. And you see ugly cells that look, basically look like a high grade sarcoma, super pleomorphic and ugly. Sometimes they have some foam. Um, which is where the name fibro, atypical fibrosanthoma came from. But I see many of these that don't have any foam. This is a little bit foamy here, but, but I don't think that's a requirement anymore. Um, and they're ugly cells, usually with a lot of mitoses, and they are slammed uh, up against the epidermis, like you said. And usually there was not going to be any like in situ malignancy. It's always good to look for squamous cell carcinoma in situ or melanoma in situ over it. That can kind of make you... Uh, lean in one direction, although I would point out that there are probably times that you can have a collision of, of uh, different things. It's kind of a little beyond the scope of what we can talk about today. But the main differential for that is people say SLAM, S-L-A-M, S for spindle cell um, squamous cell carcinoma. Um, and the L, people say for leiomyosarcoma, in my opinion, when you see leiomyosarcomas in the skin, they almost never look this ugly. They look like smooth muscle. They can have ugly atypical nuclei, but they usually have fascicles of e with eosinophilic cytoplasm. And most of the ones I've seen have been like on the trunk, I'd say. Um, and so I feel like even though that's in there and it makes a nice, uh, a nice um, acronym, um, in reality, I honestly don't usually consider leiomyosarcoma often in this differential. I do Desmond though, when I work these up, because I want to rule out rhabdomyosarcomas, which very rarely can occur in the skin, even in old adults. And they tend to behave very aggressively, even when they're small and cutaneous. And then A, um, for angiosarcoma. Angiosarcoma can occasionally have solid areas that look just like this. And A also stands for AFX, atypical fibrosanthoma. <clears throat> AFX is an ugly spindle lesion that basically, it's a diagnosis of exclusion. It's kind of like a pleomorphic sarcoma that's only up in the skin, in the dermis, and small, and has a very good prognosis despite being super ugly looking microscopically. And then M stands for spindle cell melanoma. And I've got multiple other videos about this topic, but I usually use S100 or SOX10 to exclude melanoma. 
Um, you can try to exclude squamous cell carcinoma a variety of ways. The current way I like is with P40 and CK5. Some people use pan keratin. Some people use multiple keratins. Some people like P63 or P40. Some people don't because it can sometimes have some focal non-specific staining. For angiosarc, I like to use ERG, although ERG will occasionally have patchy staining. If it's negative for ERG, then you're good because I've never, knocking on wood, never yet seen an angiosarcoma that was, CD, that was ERG negative. Um, CD31 is also a good marker for angiosarcoma. I do not like CD34 because um, uh, angiosarcomas sometimes lose expression of CD34 completely, and so that's a very dangerous pitfall. And then, um, then if you, I personally just rule out those things, and then if it looks like this and it's in the sun damage head and neck, uh, and I've excluded those, I say in my, my line diagnosis, when it's transected at the bottom of the biopsy, I say pleomorphic spindle cell neoplasm, atypical fibrous anthoma versus pleomorphic dermal sarcoma. So when these are small and confined to the dermis, <clears throat> we call them AFX, and they have a good prognosis. When they go into the subcutis or they're like big, two centimeters or bigger, or they have necrosis or perineural invasion, something like that, then we call them pleomorphic dermal sarcoma. In my opinion, they are the same tumor. We just give a different name to it when it has these more aggressive features because it has more of a risk to metastasize or behave aggressively in a subset of patients. So a long drawn out topic, but that's the kind of basic approach. And if you want to know more, like I said, I'll put links down below and you can get, can hear a lot more about it. And I, the vast majority, I, I, it's very rare for me to, to make this diagnosis anywhere except the head and neck of elderly patients. If you see an ugly spindle cell tumor in a younger patient or <clears throat> a non-sun damage site, there's a good chance that you're dealing with some other form of sarcoma or maybe an atypical fibrous histiocytoma, which is basically like a dermatofibroma that develops really nasty uh, sarcoma appearance inside of it. Um, and you're probably dealing with something like that, not an AFX or pleomorphic dermal sarcoma. So in any case, the main thing here is to rule out melanoma and those other, other entities. Um, okay, good job. <clears throat> I have one question. Yes. Uh, oh, and oh, yes. So, sorry, I, uh, then I'll let you ask. CD10 will stain most of these, but it's a pretty nonspecific marker, so I don't personally use it. Also, some people, you know, Vimentin CD68. If you want it to turn brown, you can use one of those markers. As all of you know, um, I hate Vimentin, and I find it completely worthless for spindle cell tumors, so I never use it personally. CD10 does work on this, but I've seen CD10 stain squamous cell carcinoma, melanoma, angiosarc, um, PCOM, a variety of other things, so I don't find it that helpful. If this were CD10 negative and all the other markers are negative, I'd still call it AFX versus PDS, personally. Go ahead, Rahil, sorry. Uh, so you mentioned reptomyosarcoma in the differential. Yes. Uh, from, from where would uh, reptomyosarcoma originated in the skin? Well, because that's a good... Myosarcoma arises from the blood vessel Well, so that's a, it's a great question. Where does the tumor come from? And what we realize is that, you know, we always like to think that tumors come from like normal tissue, but really they come from some sort of a precursor stem cell, right? Maybe even a more primitive stem cell that's present in the tissue that develops the ability to differentiate into a certain cell type. It's obviously way more complicated than we can get into here. And I don't fully understand it either. But what we do know is that sometimes tumors show up and grow in certain parts of the body where there is no normal counterpart. We see myoepithelial tumors arise in deep soft tissue or bone, for example. There is no normal myoepithelium there. How does that happen? We see rhabdomyosarcomas occur in places that there's no, no normal um, skeletal muscle counterpart. I mean, in the face, there's skeletal muscle in the dermis, but elsewhere in the body, the skeletal muscle's down deep, right? Yet I have seen rhabdomyosarcomas in the skin and actually have published uh, I think our series is still the largest, like 11 cases. So pretty, pretty rare, but, um, but I've seen it um, even in older adults. So we don't know. I imagine it comes from some sort of precursor um, uh, stem cell. And lyomyosarcs in the skin usually actually come from erector pili type muscle or they recapitulate that. And in deeper soft tissue, subcutis or deeper, they usually arise from the smooth muscle of vessel walls. But, but you're right, it's kind of a bizarre, wild thing to imagine how can a rhabdo grow in the skin? But it's happened and it's crazy. So I'll, I'll put some more info and links to some papers down below about, about rhabdos in the skin in case you're uh, curious. Okay, great question. Mm -hmm. uh, next case, and let me, before I forget, let me just go ahead and get the next one loading up. 